Look, look at this. Oh, fucking look at this. Look at this. You fucking came in. Oh, and they took my laptop. They took my hard drive. They took my earphones. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. So this happened. <laughs> they knew they couldn't get in the door, so they got in through the window. I'm not coming back here. I'm done. Once I get on my flight, I'm not coming back here. I'm Rosalind. Welcome back to Travel with Tay Tay. So if you're watching this video, then you will know why I'm leaving the Gambia. See this. So, 4 a.m. Between 4, okay, so between 3.30 and 7 a.m. on Monday morning, um, I awake to uh, my security telling me that someone was in the house. And this is what I come downstairs to. They stole everything, right? They stole um, all my electronics. They even stole my fucking back brace. Who stole someone's back brace? Like, they stole my book bag, which had the key to my safe, so I can't even get in my safe in the States. Like, um, so, yeah. Y'all know what I've been doing here in the Gambia. What I've been trying to do for our brothers and sisters here. And this is what happened. Yeah, so you hear it. You will hear this. Yeah, so if they're doing this, you will hear it. Now I'm going to go upstairs. And I'm going to go in my room as to where I was that night. And I'm going to see what I hear upstairs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I'm going upstairs to the to my room and I'm gonna see what I hear upstairs. Cause the window is right underneath my bedroom. Now the window is open. What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Bring you a little gold nuggets that you can pick up or you can kick it aside. You know, I just got this information here about our sister in Gambia, whose house she says that was broken in, took all her stuff, and you know. I've interviewed the sister last year. And so, you know, a very uh, emotional video that she posted of when she saw her things were taken. And, you know, a lot of electronics she was saying that was taken and stuff, these things are hard to replace when you go over to the motherland, unless you're in an African country that has those type of uh, electronics. But typically, because of the import prices, taxes, and all that, you're going to pay about double the price. And sometimes the electronics, whether it's your computer, hard drive, cell phones, these are lifelines for many a people. And so you can only imagine if you happen to lose one of these that you store all your information on, that you do your business, your work, that you stay in contact with family members, what have you, that sometimes, you know, you might have to Think about, you know, other ways of maybe duplicating the effort when you have these electronics, whether it's having two phones 
uh, keeping an external hard drive of all the work that you're doing and keeping them in separate places. You know, I've had to do this when I'm traveling in Africa. And as well as trying to keep your personal belongings like that, uh, I keep very near to me. Actually, I keep mine on my bed um, because sometimes you just don't know. Um, and this happens in different countries as well as damn Erica here in, you know, the Western world that um, you have your robbers, your thieves, you have your crooks, you know, you have all these things that happen. And so you can't make it seem as though that Africa is the only place that you want to put blame on that these things happen. Now, I know she's hurt at the time right now. And she's saying she's leaving. She's never coming back. And that's expected once something as tragic as, as this has happened. But I definitely uh, uplift my sister. And if she watched this video, that she uh, continue on your journey. Don't let this situation um, move you. You know, we have uh, our sister that you personally know, uh, Phoenix, who she also had her phone stolen out of her hand while she was in the car. Our lovely couple arrivals whose house is broken into and they stole everything from what they said. We know that the Bag family has house been broken in twice. And so we see that these go on there in Gambia as well as anywhere else. And so I'm going to, uh, I, I, I said my channel, I would always share the good, the bad, the bad, and the different. And um, I have also done videos on ways to uh, make sure that you have uh, done your job in ensuring that you have as much as security as possible. Now, me personally, I don't like to stay in single homes when I'm traveling or even if I was living in Africa, my house would not be single as one would think a single house here because there's precautionary measures that would take in place. I de definitely would have uh, a mixed unit. Um, and the reason why is because there are la layers of security, I believe, that I feel more comfortable in. And so, you know, I've lived in many a different type of structures and stuff right here you know i mean i'm right here at my rental property right now chilling but i have other houses and stuff that i could stay in uh other places that i do stay and sometimes you know i've had my single family houses i've stayed in um, for many years but i'm saying on a foreign land um as y'all watched as i travel to africa i typically have stayed in um in uh apartments condos where you have a lot of foot traffic of those neighbors, people who are coming in and out, as well as a layer of security that's around the building. Now, I'm not sure what all transpired. Uh, sometimes we don't get all the information from the individual, but you know, she made reference to that the security guard woke her up and said somebody was in the house. Now, my question that I know that me uh, have raised the question is, isn't your security guard supposed to be awake while you sleep? Now, I know I've seen many security guards are asleep at night while you sleep. Uh, something that I believe that um, if somebody's got a security idea business who they can have faithful workers who are on the job doing secure work and staying awake at night, uh, you can definitely make a very good business there in certain parts of Africa. But also what was very bothering to me was that I heard dogs in the background while she was sharing her story. And so I'm kind of questioning this whole thing of how your security guard, your dogs, and the hammering away of these bars to get out of the window that she slept through all this. Now, I'm not gonna be Inspector Gadget and I'm not gonna be Columbo trying to figure this out. I would if she hired me, um, but <laughs> um, there are some things that I raise my eyebrow at. But I say be safe out there, y'all, and take some precautionary measures when it comes to security. You know, I, I believe that the more layers of security that you have, the more safer and harder it is for somebody to be able to take what is rightfully yours. And so, you know, we have to be care careful and cautious. And uh, I'm gonna do another video here. I got a very disturbing news of a friend who passed away. I don't wanna disclose who that is uh, because I want to wait first to get more information as well as his family members to be contacted. But got to stay safe wherever you go. It don't matter. So my last words is that, you know, to you all to think about is know your surroundings and know the people you're around. I've said this before. When you travel out about, even you could be here in America, people look and see 
if you got opportunity written across your head. You know, I want to buy my wife this certain kind of purse. Cost way more money than I wanted to spend, but we had the conversation. And we said, you know, how much would this purse attract those out there who would want it? And, you know, sometimes, you know, you can't show your hand. Sometimes you got to hold your hand and not let everybody know what you got, as well as not letting people in where you live to see what you got. Because believe me, you, when you ain't paying attention looking, they are. Think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it.